Hello everyone, welcome to another anatomy video and today we'll be discussing the anterior muscles found on the antebrachium. The first muscle that is essential to identify when identifying the anterior antebrachial muscles is this muscle located right here. This muscle is the brachioradialis muscle. The reason why this muscle is important to identify is because it divides the anterior antebrachial muscles from the posterior antebrachial muscles. So this would be the first muscle that I would identify when studying a cadaver or a model. The origin of the brachioradialis muscle is the lateral supraconular crest of the humerus, right up here or on the left side on this part of the humerus. The insertion of the brachioradialis muscle is at the base of the styloid process of the radius, which can be easily seen right here in blue on the left image. Now the action of the brachioradialis muscle is actually quite unique. Apart from flexing the elbow joint, which is an action that's quite obvious to see, the brachioradialis muscle can also supinate the antebrachium when the, when the hand's found in the pronated position, and then when the hand's also in the supinated position, it can pronate the antebrachium. So it can do both actions. After identifying the brachioradialis muscle, then it's much easier to identify the rest of the anterior and brachial muscles. When studying off a cadaver or even a really good model, there are three superficial muscles found on the antebrachium that I would first identify. The first one would be this one right here. This muscle is called the flexor carpi radialis muscle. The origin of this muscle is the medial epicondyle of the humerus. Its insertion is the anterior aspect of the base of the second and third metacarpal bones. So located right here and right here. Finally, the action is to flex the carpal joint and abduct the manus at the carpal joint. And that's all the characteristics of the flexor carpi radialis muscle. Now, the second muscle found on the superficial part of the anterior antebrachium is this slender muscle right here. This muscle is called the palmaris longus muscle. This muscle is actually quite unique because it seems to be missing in 8% of the population, and it's also present only on one side of the the body and only 4% of the population as well. Its origin is the medial epicondyle of the humerus as well. And its insertion is actually quite unique. There's some terms I need to explain to you to better understand the insertion points of the palmaris longus muscle. 
If you look on the right image, I'm going to draw a rectangular band kind of overlaying on top of all these tendons of these muscles. This connective tissue that I'm kind of drawing out in this blue rectangle is called the carpal flexor retinaculum. And the purpose of this carpal flexor retinaculum is to hold down all the different tendons found on the anterior interbrachium. And it also serves as an insertion point for the palmaris longus muscle. Also in this region, in the carpal region, there's a ligament that I won't be able to draw, but it's also an insertion point for the palmaris longus muscle. Finally, on the palm of the hand, there's a thin uh, sheath-like um, connective tissue that covers the palmar aspect of the hand. This is called the palmar aponeurosis. And this also serves as an insertion point for the palmaris longus muscle. So you have the two insertion points found on the right side of the screen. And also don't forget the carpal ligament. The action for this muscle is just flex the carpal joint. And that's everything for the palmaris longus muscle. Now the last of the three superficial anterior interbrachial muscles is located right here. It's the most medial of the bunch. This muscle is called the flexor carpi ulnaris muscle. The flexor carpi ulnaris muscle is unique in that it has two different origins, kind of like the biceps brachii muscle. The first one is on the medial epicondyle of the humerus. I'll circle that here. And the second one is on the olecranon and body of the ulna. So around here and also on the olecranon, which isn't shown. Because it has two different origins, they say that the flexor carpi ulnaris muscle has two separate heads. The humeral head, which is the part of the muscle that originates on the medial epicondyle of the humerus. and also the ulnar head. So let me go ahead and write down the origins. Perfect. So if you ever asked on a quiz that which of the antebrachial muscles on the anterior aspect have two heads, you could say with confidence that it's the flexor carpi ulnaris muscle, remembering that the humeral head originates on the medial pecondyle of the humerus, and that the ulnar head re, uh, originates on the olecranon and body of the ulna. The insertion for the flexor carpi ulnaris muscle is on the pisiform bone, the hamus of the hame bone, base of the fifth metacarpal bone. So let me go ahead and circle those. I hope you can see those insertion points okay. Finally, the action of this muscle is to flex the carpal joint and adduct the manus at carpal joint. Now let's go ahead and move on to the next muscle. The last muscle I want to identify on this image is this slender rounded muscle right here. This muscle is the pronator teres muscle. The origin of this muscle, again, is the medial pecondyle of the humerus, as well as the medial side of the coronoid process of the ulna. 
So medial epicondyle of the humerus and also a part of the coronoid process of the ulna. The insertion for this muscle is on the lateral side of the middle aspect of the body of the radius. So right around here. That's the insertion point for the pronator teres muscle. And because we have this muscle starting on the medial aspect of the interbrachium and then going down onto the lateral side of the middle aspect of the radius, when this muscle contracts, um, like the name implies, it pronates the manus. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and move on to the next image. So I've removed all the muscles that we've already covered. So the brachioradialis muscle, the pronator teres, and the three superficial antibrachial muscles, the palmaris longus, flexor carpi radialis muscle, and the flexor carpi ulnaris muscle. The next muscle that you'd encounter once you removed all those muscles is this one right here. This muscle is pretty cool in that it helps flex the joints found in the digits. This muscle is called the superficial digital flexor muscle. The origin of this muscle is on the medial epicondyle of the humerus, which is no surprise. If you haven't figured out already, the majority of the flexor muscles originate on the medial epicondyle. It also originates on the coronoid process of the ulna, as well as the proximal aspect of the radius. The insertion points for this muscle are on the middle phalanges of digits 2 through 5. So the middle phalanges would be right here, so 2 through 5. The action of this muscle is to flex the carpal joint, flex the metacarpal phalangeal joints, and the proximal interphalangeal joints of digits two through five. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and move on. The next muscle I'm going to identify is this large one right here. That's deep to the superficial digital flexor muscle. Since we have a superficial digital flexor muscle, we can also assume that we have a deep digital flexor muscle, which is the one I just identified. The origin of this muscle is just the proximal aspect of the ulna. So up here, the insertion point for this muscle is going to go out a little further than what the superficial digital flexor muscle went to. It's going to insert into the base of the distal phalanges of digits 2 through 5. So the base of the distal phalanges of digits 2 through 5.
the action of this muscle, just like the superficial digital flexor muscle, is going to flex the digital joints of digits 2 through 5, as well as flex the carpal joints. The next muscle that's also deep to the superficial digital flexor muscle is this one right here. If you can see in this image, the tendon kind of courses its way down towards the pollux. This muscle is called the flexor pollicis longus muscle. The origin of this muscle is the anterior aspect of the body of the radius. It inserts into the distal phalanx of the pollux. Sorry, I forgot to draw the origin. So the anterior aspect of the body of the radius would be somewhere right around here. Body of the radius is the anterior aspect, so this would be the origin of it. And then I already drew the insertion, which is the distal phalanx of the pollux, which makes sense because none of the digital flexor muscles, neither the superficial or the deep one, inserted into the first digit. So this muscle is the muscle responsible for flexing the pollux, or the joints found within the pollux. So the action, flex joints and pollux. Perfect, now there's one more muscle that I need to cover before the end of the video. Once we take away the muscles found in the last image, we are left with this muscle right here, and it's kind of shape of a square. This muscle is called the pronator quadratus, quadratus meaning four-sided. The origin of this muscle is the distal anterior aspect of the body of the ulna. which would be right here. The insertion for this muscle is going to be the distal anterior aspect of the body of the radius. Which we would be found right here. Because of these unique attachments, you can assume that the action, like the name suggests, is to pronate the manis. Perfect. And those are all the different muscles found on the anterior antebrachium. I'll be making a follow-up video covering the different muscles found on the posterior antebrachium. But for now, I hope this video has been helpful in your studies, and you guys take care.